So just uh, come to standing, lift and roll the shoulders. Press the feet into the ground. And breathing in, raise the right arm. If it's stiff, keep your elbow bent. Stretch to where you're able to and turn the head to the left. And stay here for the in and the out breath. And when you're ready, bring the head back to the centre and breathe out to the lower of the right arm. And then breathing in, raise the left arm to where your capacity is. Breathing out, turn the head to the right. Stay here for the in. Back to the center and lift and roll the shoulders. And then breathing in, circle the arms up, keep them as bent as you need to, reverse. And then this very familiar lateral to one side, come to the center, lateral to the other side, come to the center. Turn slightly, come to the centre, and turn slightly to the other side. Come to the centre. And then lower the arms back down alongside you. Lift and roll one shoulder, and lift and roll the other shoulder. And lift and roll both shoulders. And then just connect the fingertips to the collarbones. So this is one of the first gentle movements for shoulder um, ability. Breathing in, arms out, and back. Arms out. You only go as far as is works for you, and then back. Breathing in, arms out, and back. And then just keeping the fingertips there, just circle the elbows and your circle can be tiny. But if you feel that your circle needs to be more, then you can round it and even connect your elbows together. So that again depends on your capacity. And then raising your hands up. And the same thing, you only move as little as much as works for you. And then just release your shoulders, relax your hands. So the neck connects into the shoulders as well. And imagine a pencil at the end of your nose and just draw a horizontal eight. So again, whether your eight is a flat eight or a great big round eight is up to you. And you have chosen a direction to go in that reflects the dominant part of your, one side is more dominant than the other. So it reflects your brain pattern. And then if you're able to reverse the eight, so that you're moving in the opposite direction and instantly I've gone wrong. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> So I'm obviously dominant on one side. And the other thing to remember is that the one side of your body is controlled by the opposite side of your brain. But then I'm intrigued in reflexology, actually, because there it's all left side throughout, isn't it? And yeah. side I don't I'll explain, I'll explain when we do something with our feet. I'll okay. show you why. And then just come to the centre and lift and roll the shoulders. So I'm not going to spend too long on this, but I want to show you two exercises that are for complete shoulder rehabilitation. Um, and they come in two parts, but you do each one 10 times. I'm not going to suggest that. So the first one, you'll find this in yoga, in Vinyasa yoga, part of the Krishnamacharya, which is where Sally's very, she went to, um, healing um, center. But you'll also find it in, in Tai Chi and other Eastern practices, and Qigong, Qigong as well. So breathing in, 
Circle the arms up. If they are stiff, your shoulders just keep them bent. Hands up. And then just breathe it out through the nose or the mouth. And then again, hands up and reverse. And then breathing out. So you're putting your shoulder, not that you realise it in doing this, through a complete movement. Breathing in, reverse. You're also coordinating your movement with your breath. So you're slowing everything down. And then last one of this first introductory movement. And just lift and lower your shoulders. So the next one, there are variations. Bring your hands up, bend to the arms if you need to. Breathing out, lower the hands to being in front of you. Breathing in, bend at the elbows to open out. Breathing out, come back. And then up. Breathing out, coming down. This, I think, is harder. Bend the elbows as you open out. You can open out a little bit. If you were really, you would open out a lot. That hurts my shoulder, that would be too yeah. much. That comes back, and then you're going up again. We'll make this the last one. It would be ten times. And I gave this to Dad years ago, and mm -hmm. he went to his physiotherapist. Did mm -hmm. a problem? Mm -hmm. it must have been. Oh, perhaps it wasn't a problem at the time. And then just several of his stuff. Perhaps it wasn't a problem. Maybe it was Devon. And uh, his physiotherapist said, please tell your daughter that that is absolute perfection. Oh, really? Yes, oh, that's, that's nice, nice. Today, isn't it? Yes. And Dad was delighted yeah, and fed it back to me. But often they're not quite so generous as that, but just they've opened them to the physiotherapist. Um, well, I think they're open to anything. If you think it helps you, yeah. it's good, you know. So. so it's just nice to have that. Yeah, no, it's nice to like, have that validation, I suppose. Yes. Yes. And then just lift and roll the shoulders. And then we're going to hands together, just half sweep to the sun before we come to the mat, stretching up, come through the centre, bend the knees, onto the shins, half lift, breathing out, softening, breathing in, half lift, and stay here to Soften the legs, press the feet into the ground, and roll up that a bit like that if you're standing. And just raise the arms, hold the thumbs, and just sway from side to side. You're very good anti pain. And then come to the centre. And then hands. Lift and roll the shoulders. Hands together. And then make our way to the mat in whichever, in whichever format uh, we can. Oh, I'm the same as you. I've had your foot. Um, Phil so said it's funny. Yeah, so. Phil said I'm considerably better to stay up on the wall. Um, I definitely confirms it in my life. It's, it's tendon or yeah. um, uh, ligament, but I think it's tendon. Uh, that takes two to four weeks. So it's better. Um, but. Um, and if I went to the doctor, they would just give me a strap it up or say yeah, rest it all. Yeah, they wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't do anything. So I'm saving myself a lot of um, hassle. But again, you know, that reflects your brain that I wasn't engaged. No, it's, it's just all this is mind, that's mindfulness. And it only takes a split second. And that's, you think, what? I know. I know. Um, so just um, relax your hands. And we're focusing on. Uh, the feet. Um, just what I wanted to reiterate, if you've got a problem in your hip and you think, oh, well, it's a hip I want to get to, mm. but actually your feet and your knees, if I've got a pain 
I'll tell you what, I put a pain on my shin as well, last night. So there are some energy areas under your foot, perineum, diaphragm, throat, creating five areas. In more advanced breakdowns, there are more. It's not just five, it's seven, eight, mm -hmm. nine, it goes on. Um, and if you're out in one, you'll be out virtually everywhere. And that's the problem, because we're all interconnected. So just toes um, away and toes up. Again, just a couple of times. And I kept the rush because I mean, so Janet recommended that. Oh, well, it's, 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 yeah. it's quite easily priced as well. Yeah, and just there's, a, there's a, such a wide range of stuff that you can find anything that you see, something that suits you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just a realization that I will always probably have to have. Yeah, no, sometimes just, I just do it automatically. I don't even think about it every day. It's, I just put it on and just. There's circular ankles, by the way, um, one way and then the other. Um, again, it's just, yeah. But something changes in the body that you can't take the sun any longer. I don't know what that is. No, just, just, just sensitivity with the moisture or hormones or the mind's particularly sensitive because of the stuff that I take. So. The next door they're going to Egypt for Easter. And then just bounce, and then really, really, like the first time rubbing and patting, and how you want to shake out on sea, shake out something in Egypt, shake out, shake out, shake out, shake out, shake out, shake too hot in the summer, summer, I would die. I just can't. It's, it's too hot all the year round, though. It's one of the hottest places you can go to. It's <laughs> no. what some people like, you know. Well, I went to Oman, we went to Oman years ago, it was so hot. Whereas I'd normally go into the main capital by bus or whatever, yeah. the transport, yeah. and I thought, it's so hot, I'm, I can't yeah. manage it. just stops you doing stuff, then what's the point? Yeah. I was watching the programme with Eamon Holmes and his wife on Dubai yesterday. I don't know if you saw oh, it. Oh, yeah, I saw a bit of it, yeah. <laughs> Did you see the case for them? No, no, I didn't watch her. It's super tough, labyrinth or something. Yeah. Never lips about oh, it. Oh yeah, well, I, heard, I heard yeah, the police drive around in nice cars as all the residents do, you know. So just much money there, it just it just doesn't appeal to me. It's just it's seen. It's it's tacky. It's tasteless and horrible. Mm. So um just um wanted to come back to the brain controls the opposite side of the body, but in reflexology. Mm. So just and I will be um, I'm trying to nice the soles of the feet, they do together, I can't put them. Yes, oh, I shall leave one leg out just to show you what okay. it is. So, you know the body's divided up into ten, whatever you want to call them, uh, not chakras, uh, meridian. meridians, yes. So each meridian, so you would start off between your little toe and the next toe, Yes. and if you draw a line up your body, right the way up, that's the first one. Okay. And then next one, line up. So there's five on one side and five on the other. So you've got ten across. What basically reflexology, reflexology, if I can say it does, is by manipulating the points on your feet that relate to that meridian and all the things in it, depending on where on your foot you do it, by the manipulation it releases the energy in that, sh in that meridian for the body to cure itself. So it stands to reason. So you've got maybe in the middle here, you've got this chakra, uh, this uh, meridian, yeah. yeah, which is your spine, because it's in the middle. So you, this is the outside of your body going in, this yeah. is the outside of your body going in. If you think about it like that. So it stands to reason that on each side, whichever the point is in the body, it's on that side of the body. Okay. Nothing to do with the brain of controlling it. It's just the actual oh, meridians. Okay. So it's the energy points right. that it releases. Do you see what I mean? Yes. I've explained it properly. Yes. So we're trying to think about stuff where the the reflex point is. You think on your foot. 
the head, yeah. bottom of your face, outside of your body, middle of your body here, middle. So this is outside, so working in. So for instance, the kidney area is just in here, okay. which lines up, you think, where your kidney is on your body. Yes. That's the line that it would okay. be in. That's the section it would be in. So if you draw the lines all the way out, okay, yes. put all the different points in there, they would stay in that, that meridian. Okay. So that's why. Yes, okay, that's interesting. Um, I will explain. Thank you. If you want to just um, use your fingers and massage any point that's a bit tender or, or uh, whatever, then just focus on that. And yeah, the body is very interesting. The brain is even more so. Oh, that's fascinating. Just so what? after a start program that's going on, you might see that. Oh, you can't with the um, Kate Garraway. Have you seen that? No. I'm I don't know. know. I do not. Okay. And then just um, stretch the legs out. We're going to come to mind, but I just want to invite you to take your left hand to the outside of your right thigh, right fingertips behind, breathing in, turn your head to the right, but then turn it back to look over the left shoulder, and then turn it again to look over the right shoulder. And then back to the same. And then come to the centre and bring the right hand to the outside of the left thigh, left hand behind. Turn to look over your left shoulder. Turn to the right. Look back over your left shoulder. And then come to the centre again. And then come to the centre, just bend your legs up, and we're going to come to line. So we'll be looking at um, hips, among other things here, and lower back, <laughs> knees up to the ceiling. You can just lift your bottom and just place it back down on the mat, just to even things out. We've got a dog fest going on here, yes. you might not be able to hear it, but I'm so attuned to the dogs around here that I know, I think I know, who it is, who it is and what visitors they've got. And so just all oh, the canine social world. <laughs> so then just very gently turn your head to the right. And just feel the stretch along the left side of your neck. And this will go into the shoulders. Just make sure your left shoulder is away from your ear. Taking it in and then out. And then breathing in, coming back to the centre of the head, just very, very gently turning the head. I would almost say roll, but in yogic terminology, you're not supposed to say, you know, just a turn, but anyway, roll the head to the right. And again, feel that the right um, shoulder blade is away from your um, ear, shaking slightly, and just feel the stretch on the right side. And then come back to the centre of the head. And have your feet hip width apart or wider towards the edge of the mat. Hands of either palms down on the floor or resting on the abdomen. So you just sway the feet very, very knees from very, very gently from side to side. And again, how much you sway is up to you. You're going to lift your hip off the ground. Your, if you're going to your right, your left knee will drop into the centre. And you can also think to let your head join in with this sway movement. You will just move very gently on the back of the skull. Your hip lifting off the ground. And then just very gently come back to the centre. And maybe bring your feet more to hip width apart. And this time just palms down to 
flatten the back as if you're going to lift up your bottom and then release so that your tailbone ends towards the floor and there's a little gap under your lower spine. And again, just a few times in your own breath pattern, you're just working around that lower back area. It's a remedial movement that um, you'll find in some both osteopath and physio um, practices for people who've really badly injured their back. And this is the very first movement that they might make with everything around the back supported and you're just introducing a little bit of movement on the base of the spine of the L4, L5 area, the one vertebra. And then just release that. And then keeping your right foot where it is, hug your left knee into your chest. So this is really helpful for the lower back, but it's also quite helpful for the hip. So focusing on the left side, so it's a left hip. And holding the left knee into the chest, just circle the left knee a few times. So you can feel that this is working into the upper leg and moving the leg in the hip socket. And whether you make little circles or big circles is up to you. This is one of the really key hip flexibility movements. It's not um, you control the movement, how big you want the circle to be, and then circle in the other direction. And whether you make little or large circles, you're going through the full rotation of your um, leg in the left hip socket. So if, if you've got any um, arthritis that's really it's, it's you know, just knocking on your door, this um, movement um, is just brilliant for that. It's when something stagnates, it's not moved, just pulls the muscles and allows um, the little crystalline deposit to build up and this just stops that. And then just very gently hugging the left knee into the chest. Still holding it, let it drift to arm's length. And carry on doing that a few times in your own breath pattern. If you exercise too energetically, too vigorously, that's as bad for you. It kind of goes into wear and tear and repetitive stress to um, Movement as, as doing no movement at all, so the key is to find the right level for you. And then just very, very gently, still holding the left knee into the chest, drop your hands to your left thigh and clasping mine, and just extend the left leg up to the ceiling and extend the left heel, just feel the stretch at the back of the leg. You can point and flex your left foot a couple of times. You can circle the left ankle a couple of times. The movement, because you've got your leg in a slightly different position, feels again subtly different. And then you can just walk your hands up the back of your left leg, but only as far as you comfortably stop. If that means that you feel that your chin is shooting up, then you've gone too far, just bring your hands down. And then just hug the left knee into the chest and open the left knee to the left, placing your left hand on top of your right thigh, hands either on your abdomen or palms down on the floor. And just sway your knees from side to side. So this figure of four is opening up the inner left groin and um, well, particularly the muscle on the outside of the leg, the left leg, that can get compromised and it can flex the and lower uh, back issues. It's called the piriformis muscle. And then just come back to the centre, hug the left knee into the chest and place the left foot on the floor. And just sway both knees from side to side. And come back to the centre. 
um, either adjusting the left foot to be comfortable or leaving it where it is, hug the right knee into the chest. Just enjoy that hugging in. Working on the foundational of our five energies, of the partner energy. Very helpful for lower back issues. Um, the energy of the lower abdominal um, organs, quite a few. And then just very, very gently start to circle the right knee while you're holding it in one direction. Your circles can be small or large. What happens with arthritis is that it, there is obviously a predisposition towards arthritis, it tends to run in families. But life, food, stresses, hormones, you know, a whole combination of factors means that our system starts to get overloaded. Actually, as we get older, we don't digest food as well as we might have done when we were younger. And the end result is that we don't, um, the, system, the food doesn't get digested properly, circling in the other direction. And it overloads, the liver doesn't cope with it, and it sort of stays in the system of the blood, goes around our body, and it gets deposited in little crystalline um, deposits, often at the joints. It can often be at a weaker joint, or a joint that's had an injury, it can be, um, again, um, our pre-genetic disposition, the hips are a very um, um, common point, shoulders, neck, long spine, you know, you've got lots of arth the arthritic joints. Some people have it in the hands, some people have it in the feet. And so just a nod to keeping the joints moving in a very gentle way can go some way to keeping things moving. Um, let the hug the knee into the chest. Still holding it, letting it drift away to arm's length. Very comfortable length. And just do that a few times in your own work right now. If we're right handed, we tend to um, suffer more on the right side. And so you would spend a little bit longer on the right side than you might be on the left. If that were the case. And also your liver and gallbladder are on the right side. So all the aspects of um, annoyance and frustration, irritations will come off this side. And also at this time of year, the spring and the change of seasons, you've got sap rising in the trees, it's the wood element of the Chinese medicine. And that releases and brings the surface a lot of toxins, so you've got often creaky joints around with changing seasons, but particularly the spring. And then just dropping the hands to your underneath the right thigh and gently extending the right leg up to the ceiling, and right heel, and then just flex and point the feet a couple of times. And you'll feel the back of the leg, the muscles along the back of the legs extend. So anything like sciatica, this stretches out quite nicely. And then walk the hands up the back of the right leg, but not too far, only to where it's, you can feel comfortable, you can keep a bend in your right knee. And then hug the right knee into the chest and open the right knee to the right hand, to the rest of the right hand, the right hand thigh palms down, your hands or palm the abdomen, just sway the knees from side to side. Opening up the groin on the right side and opening up another aspect of the hip. The other thing is that the muscles go into, not spasm, but they're on high alert, 
keep you up and right and moving. And they can take quite some time to begin to relax. And then hug the right knee into the chest. And then hug the left knee into the chest. And slide your hands down so as if they are just above your ankles. You're opening your inner groin. Big toes and baby towards one another. And just either stay static or slightly wobble from side to side. So you're on the inside of the inner groin here, connecting into the lower lymphatic system. And then hugging the knees into the chest. And as you breathe in, raise the left um, leg and the left arm up behind you, left leg to the ceiling, chin to chest. Stay here for in and out breath, stretching that onto the arm now. And then breathing out, hug the left knee into the chest. Just slightly rock from side to side. And then breathing in, right arm up from behind and extend the right leg. Chin into the chest. And breathing out, hugging. And again, left leg, left hand up above, extend the right the left leg, left rib. And breathe the right lower in, hugging the left knee into the chest. And back to the right side, stretching up. slightly rock from side to side over the top of the bottom and where exactly the pressure on the bottom goes depends on the, the more the legs are away from you the lower down at the bottom the pressure goes and then very gently supporting the legs underneath both thighs to bring one foot and then the other down you need to just press down with your feet to lift your bottom and then settle it down again, please do. And then with your knees bent, keep hip feet width apart. Just gently raise your elbows bent at the, your arms bent at the elbows above you. And you're stretching out onto your arms now. Check that your chin is onto your chest. Just extend your left arm. And just gently with your right hand hold your left wrist. Just gently pull your left arm, you might bring the left arm towards the midline of the body, with the right arm raise and then just release. And then change sides so that your left hand is holding your right wrist, extend the right arm and just bring the right arm towards the midline and back to the middle. And then come back to the centre. And then um, clasp your hands and place them under your head, so you're supporting your head, your elbows are out to the side. And then breathing out, flatten the back to the ground, just lift your head, your elbows come together. And then breathing out, lower your head back down to the ground, open your elbows. If your tummy domes, you've gone too fast, so really only lift a few inches or a millimetre or two. Breathing out, lift the head, chin cup to chest, elbows slightly cup together. It's a core exercise. So focus on the core strengthens the other part of the lower back. Balances out. And now this time as you breathe out and lifting the head up, just bring the elbows together slightly over towards the left. So you're lifting up the right shoulder, chin to chest, and then come back again. Only it's infinitesimal micro movements and then breathing out flattening out elbows together up and then just slightly over lifting up the left shoulder slightly and then come back and then 
and just release the head back down to the ground, slide the fingers out and come in with the head. And just rest the hands on the abdomen and the elbows slightly out. We're giving space again at the shoulder level, so just check that your shoulders are flat on the ground, that you're not hunching them up. And just some simple breath awareness, breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the mouth. And carry on your own breath pattern, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Raising the nitric oxide, relaxing the muscles. So we want to calm the system down, the body nerves down. This is a very useful exercise to do. So is everything down. And as the muscles begin to relax, blood flow through um, everywhere, the digestive system, the organs, increases slightly. Also here on the ground, your body's not being asked to hold itself up. But there's that fine point because if you stay on the ground for too long, you can get stiff. There's that, there's that balance point. And then hugging the knees into the chest once more, just rocking gently from side to side. And hugging the knees in, just letting the knees away to arms leg. Just feel that you're doing whatever you want to do that. And then roll to the side so it would be to the right. And we're going to um, come onto our knees before onto um, either puppy pose. So bottom up to the ground, up to the ceiling, and elbows on the ground. Or you can make fists so that you're resting your forehead on your fists. Just stretching your back out, not so much. And if you feel um, that you'd like to do quarter dog, then your right arm would go across you and your left arm would stretch out. And you can rest your forehead on your back of your right hand. Back of your right hand, that's a quarter dog, but that's stretch of that left side. And then bring the arm back. Left arm would go across you and your right arm would stretch out. Quarter dog for a stretch in your side, but if you're still like puppy, you're going into your upper back. And then just come back to either puppy or fist stop, um, resting your forehead, bottom up slightly. And you've got pressure on you, you are on your knees, but you're not just giving pressure to the knees. Holding for the nervous system. Taking blood in the head, if you've got a headache, this is quite helpful. In extreme stress, we go to fight or flight mode, the blood leaves the head, goes to the major organs, and then we kind of dehydrate. Gently come to thinking your way to a seated position, either cross legged or legs out in front of you. Oh, I got started so. <laughs> <laughs> 
celebrating our various um, ailments here. My excuse is I've done something to my tendon, which is very boring, unless you're actually, it's a boring, unless you're actually yeah. suffering. I've got, I've got no excuse. And just very, very gently breathing in, opening the hands and breathing out, connecting to the, almost the base chakra. Breathing in, opening out and connecting to the sacral chakra area, which is halfway through the navel in your perineum. Breathing in and connecting to the navel, chin to chest. Breathing in and connecting to the heart. Breathing in and connecting to the throat. That stiff neck and shoulders. Breathing in and connecting to the third eye, center of your open magician. And breathing in and connecting to the top of the head, where we can connect to the rest of the outside world. People who are very <coughs> sensitive um, can often. This, you can get headaches in very crowded places, and then just bring your hands to your heart. Choose a colour for today, and just wrap yourself around with your colour, like a cloud or an egg, conferring protection on you for the day ahead. 